What was supposed to be an unconditional 72-hour humanitarian ceasefire didn't last long. Really, it was only a matter of hours till fighting started again. And predictably, both sides are blaming each other. Here's how it's playing out. Israel says Hamas has fired at least eight rockets into its territory and may have captured an Israeli soldier. If Israel continues its military operation on the ground, it is our right to take the necessary measures against them. Basically, both sides are accusing the other of ending the ceasefire, with Hamas blaming Israeli occupation in general, and Israel accusing Hamas of kidnapping an Israeli soldier and firing rockets into Israel. And while the UN, which helped broker the ceasefire, admits it can't immediately confirm those reports, this statement from the UN's Robert Suri saves condemnation largely for Hamas. If corroborated, this would constitute a serious violation by Gazan militant factions and should be condemned in the strongest terms. When the U.S. and U.N. announced the ceasefire, a triumphant Jerusalem Post declared Hamas bruised and battered, though acknowledged the likelihood of a ceasefire not holding. And of course, that piece blamed Hamas for ending past ceasefire attempts. At the other extreme, though, Iran's press TV undeniably puts the blame on Israel, with the headline, Israel kills dozens of Palestinians during Gaza truce. The ultimate and perhaps obvious end result to all this is that a peaceful and rational end to the conflict appears even further away now. 1,400 Palestinians and around 65 Israelis have died since the fighting began in July. For Newsy, I'm Christina Hartman.